So welcome back. Um, this is topic 1.3, membrane structure, and basically in this topic we'll cover the basic um, structure and function of the plasma membrane and kind of what um, constitutes a cell membrane. So here are the guiding, the guiding, the guidance, applications, understandings, everything that um, IB expects and IB students know about this subtopic. So first things first, phospholipids. Phospholipids are the main components in cell membranes. And basically, it's their um, unique structure and their pro the properties that arise from the structure that um, kind of give rise to this um, phospholipid bilayer. So if we look here, there's two main parts to the phospholipid. There's a hydrophilic head and a hydrophobic tail. Now, this, hydrophobic, this hydrophilic head is, a phosph is known as a phosphate head, while these are known as two-chained carbon um, hydrocarbon tails. So what this does is since this area loves water and this area kind of ha hates water, if you place phospholipids in an area of water, say um, bodily fluids like blood or if just water in general, what will happen is the heads will all want to be near the water while the tails will all kind of get in together in order to avoid the water at all costs. And what this does is since these tails want to be together and these heads want to be with the water, it'll create this iconic um, phospholipid bilayer structure that all membranes utilize. It's also important to know that if you put phospholipids in water, you can also get a second structure that'll rise. It's not as, um, structu it's not as structural when it comes to protecting the cell and needing, doing um, all the things that it needs it to do, but it does happen sometimes. Um, we have basically the phospho, the hydrophilic heads will all get on the outside and form this circle, and then the hydrophilic tails will come in and be in the middle. So now, as we look at this, it's important to notice um, how we came upon this phospholipid um, structure, this, this bilayer structure. So the first kind of um, popular model was the Gorder and Grendel model. And what these two men did is they took a sample of blood, and they spun it up, and they basically found all the component parts and what they noticed was is from one single cell there was enough there was enough phospholipids to make two single layer cells cells and what that told them was that in this one cell there had to be a double membrane there had to be two layers of phospholipids and that's basically what you're seeing here and again all the hydrophilic heads the top and the tails in the middle and then later, as time went on, they also realized, okay, well, what about this section right here? We found proteins. We found tons of proteins. And we know that they don't come from the cell because they don't match any of the proteins that we know that the cell has. So where can they come from? Oh, well, Davidson and Yelly came along and they said, well, they come and they sit and they sandwich this phospholipid bilayer. So basically, you're having this like sandwich model of proteins on the top, proteins on the bottom, and a hydro... Um, a phospholip phospholipid bilayer in the middle. And their kind of um, explanation for this is when you take an electron micrograph of a cell membrane, what you're seeing here is these two layers, two dark, dark layers, and this kind of lighter layer in between. And what they took that as is, well, let's put these um, as proteins, and let's say this middle part right here is the phospholipid bilayer. What they didn't know is those dark um, lines were actually just the phospholipid heads and that they were actually mistaked just the simple, just the bilayer as um, four layers of different molecules. So as time went on, again, they did more experiments, not Jason and Daniele specifically, but other scientists. And they realized when they did a freeze etched electron micrograph, it basically they took a cell, um, plasma membrane, they put it in a freezer, they froze it, and then they cracked it. Oops, let's draw that again. And basically what happened was, is they noticed that there was some discrepancies here where um, there seemed to be protein, where there, there were some discrepancies, there were some fractures. And the only reason for these fractures would have to be something inside the membrane. And they said, well, maybe it's these proteins. Another experiment that kind of gave rise to this was that these, and when they found the component parts to a cell membrane, they noticed that, well, maybe there's some spiral proteins up here, there's some globular proteins over here, there's some smaller proteins down here. There's so many different types of proteins from just this one cell. It doesn't make sense to think that there this it doesn't make sense to think a uniform layer of proteins when we have so many different types of proteins. And then finally, say they took two cells, 
can get see if I can get a different color here. And then they put proteins into them that were tagged with the specific um, with a specific radioactive marker. And then they let them interact. And basically what the result was is these two cells were kind of, when they would touch, they would be, have the ability to transfer um, some, of the, some of the fluorescent proteins. So back to green. And that means that this rigid structure defined by the Davidson and Yelly model, where there was a sandwich of proteins, doesn't make any more sense. It doesn't make sense anymore when it comes to this result, because how can, oh, that's kind of bad. How can this whole section be replaced with green when it was only the outside that was touched? So that kind of gave rise to the Singer-Nicholson model, or the fluid mosaic model. And basically what we have here is we have a the same idea of this phospholipid bilayer, but instead now we have, instead of a protein sandwich, we have proteins integrated within, within, within and throughout in different, every, many different types of proteins just um, all integrated in here. And so basically now we have this, um, these are integrated proteins, proteins that go through the entire membrane, and then these are known as peripheral proteins, they only are integrated on one side, and basically you'll notice that maybe um, this right here, this edge over here is um, hydrophilic, while this edge is hydrophobic. But basically all these different types of proteins um, matched everything, all these previous experiments that said, you know what, this protein um, sandwich isn't working anymore. And then another thing important to notice thing here, another important thing to notice here is that it's not only phospholipids in this membrane, it's also cholesterol. Now, this wasn't in the previous model, but after its discovery, it kind of made more sense why the membrane acts as it does. Now, generally, the phospholipids alone kind of explained this ability to have a membrane that's fluid and moves. These uh, weak hydrophobic interaction allows um, phospholipids to transfer and go everywhere in the membrane. They're not structured they're super hard. They're not structured in like a super concrete way. How, and this also allows for a few um, properties that we'll discuss in 1.4 that... Um, membrane transport, so if something tries to enter the cell, and it's, it, there's other components of that, but basically if it tries to enter the cell, this membrane will collapse, not, yeah, it'll collapse in on itself and create a second membrane around whatever it's trying to enter the cell and then fix up the membrane there. But basically, what, what the problem was is that this membrane alone would be too fluid or maybe crystallized, so if we add cholesterol within here, which also, when you draw, when you notice cholesterol, I'll just say, this also has a, um, or this molecule, I guess I should draw it more, molecule-like. This cholesterol also has a hydrophilic head and a hydrophobic um, tail. So this is easily integrated within um, the, the phospholipid bilayer, almost as if, a phospholi if it was a phospholipid itself. And what this does is it does a few things. It prevents crystallization. And by reducing, and then it also reduces the fluidity, so it makes it not too fluid, and also makes it not too stiff. I know it can be kind of confusing, but just kind of get the general idea that this cholesterol is embedded within the membrane. So now these um, proteins that we just discussed, they each have their own um, special job. So one is going to be junction. There's going to be important. Um, say you have a protein here and a protein here. These proteins are going to allow for the cells to connect. Of course, these are all, all the proteins that draw will be considered within the membrane. Um, there's enzymes. Not, not, and not that they act as enzymes, but if, say you have a protein here within the membrane, what this protein will do in, refer to, in reference to enzymes, it'll kind of attach itself to the enzyme and then face the active site in a way wherever it's needed. We have transport. That's the integral proteins, which I kind of pointed out there. Um, basically, it allow for movement of um, molecules. One common one that you should know is aquaporin, and what it does is it allows for the transport of water, since this is polar and it's not wanted by the hydrophobic tails. We have recognition. This is important when it comes to glycoproteins. Um, glycoproteins will have this um, this extra part to it, so it's re it can be recognized by other cells. And the cell recognition can be multiple factors, but what it also kind of helps here with um, adhesion. Finally, um, we have anchorage, which is the attachment 
um, to the cytoskeleton. Now this um, we'll discuss later, but basically what a cytoskeleton is, is um, this kind of like filaments within the cytoplasm and this kind of, this protein will attach to it. And then transduction hormone binding sites. So we'll have a protein within the membrane and what will happen is a hormone will come and it'll do its job there. All of these will kind of be later discussed in depth when it comes to what the specific things that it um, is relevant with. So the endocrine system or the immune system, um, basically, yeah, that'll all be discovered, or you'll understand more in context of what it is. But basically, right now, for this, all you need to know is um, the basic functions. So here's an example question. Um, what are the functions of membrane proteins? So we have hormone binding. That is That makes sense. Um, and then DNA replication. Well, this, is, this takes place with proteins, but not in the membrane. Same thing here. We have cell adhesion. That makes sense. But translation that's not going to occur in the membrane proteins. Cell communication and protein pumps. These are the integral proteins, the ones that are go all the way through. Now this kind of makes sense, so question mark. And then we have passive transport. That kind of makes sense. Again, the integral proteins. And then we also have glycolysis. Now this is in reference to um, cellular respiration, which occurs in the cytoplasm and mitochondria, not the membrane. Here's the second question. Animal cells often secrete glycoproteins as extracellular components. What role, what are the role of these glycoproteins? I'll give you a moment there. So as we discussed, these proteins kind of have an extra protein on them, which allows for cell recognition. A cell with another protein will come by and it'll be like, yes, that's the correct cell. And it kind of, it can be multiple things, but usually it's kind of like adhesion. So adhesion, that kind of makes sense. Additional energy reserve, it's kind of tricking you here with something else, it's kind of um, trying to get you to think of glycogen, which is a form of sugar, but that's not what we're looking for here. Membrane fluidity, this is going to either refer to the phospholipid, the phospholipids or the cholesterol, not so much the proteins within it. Water uptake, as I said before, this is that protein aquaporin that will allow water to pass through. So it's a adhesion. Um, I guess one more multiple um, choice question. What is this um, molecule here? So if you'll notice that there's a two rows of these um, phospholipids, but these don't look so much like the phospholipids, so you kind of start thinking, okay, well, what else is embedded within this membrane? It's definitely not these proteins that are here, and it's definitely not the glycoproteins as seen here. It's going to be most likely cholesterol, as you'll see, like... Um, the phospholipids, it has this hydrophilic end and this hydrophobic tail. So it's a cholesterol, that's the maybe. Glycoprotein, as we discussed, it's these ones with like these tails sticking out. Phospholipid, well no, this is, it's not as, a, as it's, the cholesterol is not as as, bun, as, a, as abundant within the membrane, so it's definitely not going to be that. And amylase is an enzyme in, that helps in the breakdown of starch, which is not found in the membranes, so that cholesterol. So these are some examples of any free res some free response questions you might get. So we have a draw a label diagram to show molecular structure of a membrane. So I'm not going to draw the whole thing, but basically what you're going to want to end up with is the Singer, flu the Singer Nicholson fluid mosaic model, where you have this, make sure to draw the two phospholipid bilayers, or the, the one phospholipid bilayer with two phospholipid layers. Um, make sure to include cholesterol. Now you don't need to include a name protein per se, but include at least one integral protein, one peripheral protein, and one um, peripheral glycoprotein. Or I guess this, better, this over here is a better example of a peripheral protein that's not necessarily a glycoprotein. You notice it's four marks, and if you have one, two, three, four, that's like five things there, so you'll be good. And then outline four different types of functions of membrane proteins. That goes back to the chart if you want to go back to that part of the video. But basically, if you remember jet rat, you should be good. So jet rat here, we have junction enzyme, I guess you can say enzyme bonding or enzyme um, holding. Um, then we have transport, which is the integral proteins. We have recognition, anchorage, and transduction. Again, this transduction, remember, don't be confused by transduction. It's... Um, hormone binding sites. So that's pretty much all I need to know for topic 1.3.